twisting with your legs apart. No, you don't do that. You bend your legs and then you arch your back. Oh, and oh God! You do it. For oh. We about to check out this video, y'all. Sent this to me. I know EDP has to be in here. <laughs> Let's do this though. There have been dozens of cases where YouTubers were exposed to be predators, but we're going to explore eight of the most infamous cases, hey. starting with EDP 445. Oh, Before the notorious I mean, cupcake incident on the 18th of April 2021, EDP was a favorite creator amongst almost everyone, as he was one of the last YouTube creators with absolutely no filter, therefore no filter. tackling every topic regardless of the vulgarity. I was hey. like, just staring because I was trying to hold in my ass cheeks. I was trying my best not to sh on myself. No doubt, EDP had some hilarious moments throughout his career, building a fan base that was always there to support him. However, this support from fans would soon be put to the test because EDP's career was about to take a controversial turn. In July 2020, rumors started to spread claiming that EDP was inappropriately messaging his underage fans. And while EDP addressed the situation claiming he was innocent, some people were unconvinced. One of these people was a YouTuber named Cold Raven, who uploaded a series of videos in an attempt to expose EDP. Still, despite all the evidence Cold Raven provided, viewers quickly concluded that he was simply using EDP's name for clicks. But Cold Raven was still committed to exposing EDP. The next time, one of Cold Raven's viewers set up a decoy account posing as a minor, which successfully baited EDP into messaging them. And by the end of 2020, EDP was caught eight times trying to meet up with underage people. The story would then take a massive turn on the 18th of April 2021 when EDP- You got eight chances? What? He was on his way to pick up a cupcake. Hey! Whoa, I was actually hey. coming out here to pick up a cupcake and then go back home. However, when EDP arrived, he was instead confronted by a group of people who were all part of a massive sting operation set up to expose him. The situation quickly became one of the most talked about things on the internet, and EDP slowly lost everything. His YouTube account was deleted, he was fired from his job, and struggled to find new ways to make a living. The story could have ended here if it wasn't for prominent names like Jideon and Skeeter Jean, who teamed up together to, once again, catch EDP 445 in the act. On September 3rd, 2023, Jideon posted a 12 second clip on TikTok showcasing him and Skeeter Jean supposedly confronting EDP. You know, this is not a fucking joke, man. I'm just selling that loss for words. You know, two years ago you were caught kiss my ass in 4K trying to meet a 13 year old. And really I'm not talking to you, he's talking to you. My nigga, this is bullshit, man, that y'all pulling right now. Although the full video of the situation hasn't been posted yet, there have been clips surfacing online showing what appears to be EDP messaging another underage person. While the EDP situation was one of the most infamous in YouTube history, it wasn't the first time a well-known YouTuber turned out to be a pedophile. Demetrius Madsen or Jikishi was on track to become one of the biggest Minecraft streamers of the past decade, but when he was exposed to be a pedophile, his career changed forever. After catching the attention of the biggest Minecraft content creator, Dream, for his quote, kind and loving personality, Jikishi was invited to become part of the most famous Minecraft server in the world, the Dream SMP. However, for fans of the Dream SMP, Jikishi's sudden disappearance may come as a surprise. The reason for his absence dates back to October 2021, just two days after his introduction to the Dream SMP, when disturbing allegations of grooming began surfacing on Twitter by a user named Vauxy. Due to the recent event of him joining a considerably large content creator group and gaining exponentially more exposure, I feel like it's my responsibility to bring this to light in order to prevent this person from taking advantage of more young girls. The person would then claim that both of them had begun talking when she was 14, while Jikishi was 18 18 or 19, and that things had already become sexual in his end during their earliest conversation. Oh! Valkyrie would share screenshots of their Discord chats where she noticed that the dynamic shifted from nothing more than platonic friends to him being sexual towards me and wanting sexual things from me. The two of them would eventually exchange explicit pictures with each other, with Jikishi frequently talking about her body. We also discussed more about him coming to visit me in my own town, and in these conversations, his replies would get extremely sexual and pushy. I was coming from a place of eagerness to meet one of my best friends in person. He was not on the same page. She then alleges that if we would have met up that summer, I would have been 15 while he was 20, alone in a hotel with a man who said he would try to not make sexual advances on me. However, Jikishi would carry on. Him talking to me like this carried on until I was 16, even after I curved him multiple times and expressed my disinterest in him sexually. I wanted to keep talking to him because I didn't want to lose one of my best friends, so I tried to ignore and disregard it when he made sexual remarks towards me. I can no longer ignore it as his audience of young and impressionable girls is growing by the second. This, this was the final straw for Valksy, who can Concluded that she eventually blocked Jikishi on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram several months before she posted this tweet longer and has not spoken to him since. The story could have ended here, but things took another twist. As it turns out, Valksy wasn't the only one who had unsettling experiences with Jikishi, because over the next 24 hours after the post by Valksy went live, more than 18 people stepped forward to detail their experiences with Jikishi, 
One victim who had come forward was Chaotic Jaden, Jakishi's video editor. In another tweet longer, she would say, This all started in October of 2016 when I was 13. That was good that you was making sure to spread your seed far and wide by talking to 18 different women, but you're supposed to be talking to 18 of age, bitches. Come on, baby. years old and he was 17. We talked every day and eventually started dating back in December 2016. Oh, no. Long story oh, short, no. we broke up in March 2017 and stopped talking for a while. However, this wasn't the last time 13. both of them were involved, as Chaotic Jaden would state that they would start talking again in 2018 before revealing their relationship took a different turn. Our relationship turned from best friends to really quickly. He constantly asked me for sexual favors, including nudes and videos. We exchanged pictures multiple times. At this time, I was 14 and he was 19. I broke up with him shortly after this, but he wanted to continue being quote, friends with benefits with me. He still wanted nudes for me and wanted to do things in Discord calls as well. He wasn't so quick to give up though. According to Jaden, she repeatedly told Jakishi that she wanted to end the relationship, but he would constantly beg her anyway. He would stop for a week and then continue harassing me and begging me for nudes and other things again. In the following days after these two exposés, were uploaded to Twitter, more than 40 new people came forward detailing their own experiences which were almost identical to the last ones. These claims would lead Dream to removing Jakishi from the Dream SMP because Jakishi actually went on to personally confirm the allegations with Dream. Jakishi never issued an apology or even responded to this situation at all. His Twitch was permanently banned, his YouTube hey. channel and TikTok page were deleted, and Jakishi simply disappeared from the online world altogether. Hey. Colleen Ballinger was another creator who was exclusively oh, blamed her underage fans. Ew. Colleen Ballinger became well known for her internet persona, Miranda Sings, a character that she introduced to YouTube in 2008. Recognized universally for her signature red trousers and thick lipstick, Miranda gained an audience of more than 10 million subscribers, Ew, establishing a very dedicated Ew. fan base. However, little did anyone know, there would be elements from within this dedicated community that would oh. later bring to light allegations of inappropriate behavior associated with her. These allegations mainly centered around her interactions with Adam McIntyre, who was just 10 years old when Colleen would engage in inappropriate interactions with them. In a video a released in June 2023, Adam would upload a video titled My Relationship with Colleen Ballinger in which he would go deep into how big of a fan he That's was before everything went south. Because after meeting up in person for the second time in 2016, Colleen and Adam's relationship took a different path. After sharing his negative experiences with Colleen, Adam would eventually expose Colleen for grooming him. Being more inappropriate and I just was like, this woman used me. This woman Groomed me. The video immediately went viral, bringing hundreds of thousands of people in light of the situation. Colleen came forward with a response to the grooming allegations, though it didn't work out the way she might have hoped. In a response that many found a bit odd, she chose to address the serious allegations by singing a song in which she claimed that cancel culture was simply trying to silence her and that the accusations were all lies. A lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. Doesn't matter if it's true though. Just as long as it's entertaining. Many wouldn't even consider this video an apology, since Colleen never even apologized in the video. As the internet dug deeper, however, they found many other instances of Colleen acting inappropriately with children, particularly during her live shows, further fueling the consensus that Colleen was a pedophile. In one show, Colleen was seen asking a young kid to reach into her pants as a part of a pretend dating skit, which unsurprisingly raised a lot of eyebrows. There were also times when she called girls onto the stage just to mock what they were wearing. As a result of this huge mess, Colleen decided to cancel her upcoming live shows and hasn't been seen on the platform in over two months. Really, bitch? While many of the YouTubers on this list have been under the internet's radar for most There's of their no careers, Future Man dumb. was not, which would in part be Who's the biggest reason dumb? as to why his crimes had remained buried hey, for so Tom, long. Future Man, There's also known as Tom Willett, had a relatively you? small channel on YouTube where he posted song covers and vlogs, until his channel exploded in popularity after he uploaded his video Eating a Watermelon with a Clone, which now has over 5.6 million views. Future Man earned the reputation as a wholesome and down-to-earth person. However, after it was revealed that he was a pedophile, his image changed drastically. In you February think? 2023, users on Tom's fan subreddit unearthed a disturbing truth about his past. It was revealed that before his Hollywood career, he had faced three child molestation charges in Nevada. Still, due to inconsistencies in the sentencing laws at the time, he managed to avoid serving three consecutive life sentences. As news articles and legal records started to circulate, Tom discussed a conviction in a since-deleted YouTube video. In this video, he displayed a lack of remorse for his actions and actively avoided discussing the actual crime he committed. About 1977, I uh, became involved with the court system once again. I was arrested. I was arrested, I was tried, I was convicted by a jury, and I was sentenced. And the sentence uh, was life in prison.
Instead, Futureman dove into legal intricacies and how he managed to evade the sentencing. He even concluded the video by advising people to stand their ground and credited his freedom to having some friends. Anyone? What? Is there a situation where you are dealing with uh, law enforcement that is not proper, do stand your ground. I did not make any deals with any uh, police or district attorney or anyone. Everything happened because I happened to have some friends. Following the release of this video, many fans unsubscribed and felt betrayed. Speculations arose, with some suggesting Future Man had bribed the judge or that undisclosed factors had allowed his freedom. Shortly after posting this video and receiving this amount of backlash, Future Man would delete his video and many assumed that his channel had been abandoned. What this would change when Future Man began posting videos once again as if nothing even happened. While many of his fans had unsubscribed and regularly leave comments under his videos calling him out for his past actions, Future Man would ignore these and carry on posting his videos as if nothing even changed. Unlike the previous YouTubers who managed to avoid legal consequences, MadThad0890 did face illegal repercussions but somehow found his way back onto YouTube. MadThad was notorious for his short YouTube vlogs featuring his rather unconventional girlfriend, an anime body pillow. One of his most notable videos showcased his framed photos, a mouse pad, and his anime body pillow of the character Kodanoa as he celebrated her birthday. Yet this wasn't the first time Damn. he posted this absurd content. In one particular video, MadThad shockingly admitted to having questionable yeah. preferences, including an attraction to highly explicit and controversial themes. What's going on all the people that make fantasies, yeah, fantasies and brother and sister scenes and shit that no, it's not no, good. And I like that kind of shit, you know. Wish I had a little sister suck it. I got a brother. That's Mad Dad's presence wasn't limited to YouTube. Oh. He also had a presence on Facebook. On this platform, he posted disturbing content about how to look for illegal content and how to encrypt them. And in 2013, the FBI seized all of Mad Dad's electronic devices after receiving an anonymous tip about his online activities. Although Mad Dad claimed that the posts related to explicit content were a prank, the FBI made a shocking discovery. A folder on his hard drive containing more than 300 illegal photographs and movies labeled Don't Click. Surprisingly, Mad Dad managed to avoid jail time and was instead granted bail, which came with strict conditions, including wearing an ankle monitor and a prohibition from using the internet until his jail period ended. Just three days before his bail was set to end, Mad Dad made a crucial mistake by posting something incriminating on Twitter. This action further implicated him, and this time, the FBI took a more severe stance. Mad Dad was compelled to accept another plea deal that would result in a prison sentence ranging from 5 to 20 years. Additionally, he was required to delete all his online accounts and register as a sex offender for the remainder of his life. Court documents revealed that Mad Dad's sentencing was influenced by the disturbing discovery of over 600 illegal photographs involving quote sadistic or masochistic conduct. Mad Dad served his prison sentence until his release on October 9th, 2018. His parole conditions included restrictions such as not being allowed to own or purchase anything from shops selling explicit material after his release, submitting all online account passwords right to the back. US Department of Justice, and using a single here. internet connected device. While it might seem like the story has a positive outcome nope. with Mad Dad behind bars, there is a concerning twist. You see, Mad Dad was released in 2018, and he started posting on YouTube again. Perhaps Mad Dad's channel has shifted from anime-centered content to a rant channel due to his parole conditions. Nowadays, Mad Dad discusses many topics, including internet culture, Pride Month, and video games. Yet the most troubling aspect of this story is despite his criminal history, Mad Dad can still post videos on YouTube, raising concerns about the platform's policies and how it addresses such issues. However, unlike Mad Dad, who somehow beat the justice system despite being convicted of heinous crimes, Austin Jones never got an easy way out. Austin Jones or Ostud Pro initially gained fame on YouTube for his rock song covers. With a seemingly innocent profile, it's least expected that Austin would be convicted of evil crimes. On May 10, 2015, allegations surfaced in an article by Pop Fresh suggesting that Austin Jones had engaged in inappropriate conversations with his underage female fans. It was reported that Austin would send messages to his fans on his Facebook page asking about what you expect? The nigga look just like Shane Dawson. Y'all should saw it coming the same way I did, man. Come on, baby. Like, get doing your game, now. Nah. Through ages, sparking concerns about his interactions with underage people. Austin Jones faced severe backlash sparking concerns about his interactions with underage people. Austin Jones faced severe backlash after videos of him instructing his underage fans to twerk and manipulating them into sending explicit photos surfaced the internet. Twerk move. <laughs> um, so this is what you do. I swear to God, if this grown man fucking twerks, I'm kicking a random innocent person out the Discord. I swear to God, I'm tired of seeing anus, damn it. Well, man's anus, at least. Seen, at least seeing the bitches. Damn! You sit with your legs apart. No, you don't do that. You bend your legs, and then you 
Oh, oh God! You do it for oh. So it's like, oh. In response to these allegations, oh. he released oh. a video titled Setting the Record oh. Straight, yeah. where he addressed his involvement oh. in discussions about twerking videos. Oh God! I used to ask fans for twerking videos. Yes, twerking the dance move. It's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that I think is right. But what you do done. Ever? However, the video received mixed <laughs> reviews from fans, with some supporting him while others demanded further action against Austin, seeing that he merely tried to guilt trip people into thinking he was a victim. In the video, Austin revealed that reading hateful comments on social media platforms had a detrimental effect on his mental health, leading to severe depression. It really blew up online. <coughs> and, uh, sent me down a path that uh, is pretty scary. He angrily denied all the allegations. They're just not true. Nothing ever went further than twerking videos. There were never any nudes, never any physical contact. It never happened. So I just have to get that out there because nothing ever went further. And even went as far as sharing personal aspects of his life, some that were not even related to the original topic, such as the passing of his sister when he was six years old and his parents' divorce when he was young. I experienced death and loss at a very young age. Only white people get away with this type of bullshit. I'm a victim. Let me bone more young people. <laughs> um, I had an older sister. She passed away when she was 10 years old. So? I was six years old at the time. So? Um, and? Know, losing a sibling for anybody is tragic. I and lost a sibling. Going through it at such a young age and? Uh, was very difficult for me. So? Comments were quick to call out his actions, pointing out how he was merely trying to use his sad story to gain sympathy from his viewers. Don't use the death of your poor sister for sympathy points. What an insult to her memory and those that will forever mourn her. The thing that's crazy is that this guy thinks this is an apology video. It's just him giving excuses and telling his tragic backstory for 16 minutes like that is not an apology. A warrant for Austin Jones' arrest was issued on June 9th, 2017 Damn! and he was subsequently arrested three days later at an airport in Chicago. Federal investigators discovered four pieces of evidence of Austin clearly grooming his fans from 2016 to 2017. And since dozens of fans had already alleged Austin had groomed them, it's obvious that there were way more than four cases. During a phone search, the police discovered inappropriate text messages between Austin and his underage fans. Austin Jones was released three days after posting a $100,000 bond, but was placed under house arrest with the restrictions that included a prohibition on using the internet. However, this state did not last for too long. On May 3rd, 2019, Austin Jones pleaded guilty to all the charges and was sentenced to 10 years in federal prison with eight years monitoring his release scheduled on December 31, 2027. In hindsight, it's hardly surprising that Zaza faced legal trouble related to sexual activity with a 13-year-old girl given his history. Zaza was known for his nerdy and incel personality type on YouTube. He gained recognition for creating content that often involved approaching girls in public and asking them out. Can I have your phone number? Dang it. Zazef started his channel at the age of 12, primarily focusing on RuneScape content. However, he transitioned into making fake story time videos, like one where he pretended to ask a girl to be his valentine, which ended up with him simulating her with a knife. Hi, I'm pretty sure you already know this, but I don't have a valentine yet. I saw this girl and I came up to her and then I said, hey, you want to be my valentine? And then she was just laughing at me and she laughed at me and then and she said, no, what? Come back here, please. And then she came back here. And then I got out my knife and I in her boob. He continued to create what? these fake story time videos, but eventually shifted to approaching girls in public and documenting his interactions with them. Zazef's most popular video featured him finally being able to hug a girl, which garnered millions of views and substantially increased his subscriber count to over 60,000. I That's an accomplishment for someone like him. He got the hook by the bro. Girl. That... Wait till you get swallowed, man. She it's a whole new world. Like it's like that Aladdin shit when she the throat she goes. My cousin. As time passed. Zazaf created a new series on his channel, no, live streaming his encounters on, with girls hey, in his local man. area. Although these live streams have come since on, been man. removed by YouTube, they attracted the attention of local authorities. In a video titled I Got Swatted by Police, posted in 2018, Zazaf revealed that law enforcement had visited his home to inquire about his live streaming activities. Uh, yesterday, I got swatted by the cops because of my live streams. They knocked on my door and they pretty much asked me what am I doing with my live streams? And he told me I can't be sexually harassing girls and stuff. And 
they said that I can get arrested. In his video, he was quick to assert that he wasn't sexually harassing any girls during these interactions. I'm not sexually harassing any girls because I really am not sexually harassing any girls. Following the visit from police, they would then go on to look through Zazef's devices and question him about his search history. So they looked through all my, they looked through my computer, they looked through my phone, and they looked through my iPod Touch, and they were asking me. What kind of porn do I watch? Based on the content he'd been consuming, they alleged that he had a liking towards essay fantasies. And then they were like, um, do you, do you have any fantasies and stuff? So they were trying to like, make me go to jail for like having fantasies. I didn't even have fantasies, okay? Despite the police's warning that he should no longer film those live streams, Zazev continued his activities for a time, and if anything, only strengthened his need to continue streaming. For a while, Zazev women. would continue streaming as usual, taking to the streets and talking to women, and posting a few videos as well. This is when, with seemingly no warning, Zazev would stop uploading. And on the 4th of May 2018, news wrote that Zazef was arrested. In a 2018 CBS article, Zazef would make a reappearance, where it was reported that Roseville police say 22-year-old Alexander Rudenko had arranged to meet up with what he believed was a 13-year-old girl he had been talking to on social media. Oh, oh. However, when he arrived in Roseville for the meetup, he was confronted by law enforcement instead. Rudenko was then arrested and faced charges related to attempting to meet a minor with a bail set at 200,000. And on May 9, 2019, Zazef received a sentence of 364 days in jail and was placed on a four year probation period requiring him to register as a sex offender. Zazef's story took another disturbing turn in 2022 when another CBS News article reported his arrest once again. According to the article, the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office says 26 year old Alexander Rudenko was arrested on August 30 on five counts related to sex crimes. Detective Detectives say that the arrest stems from an investigation into Rodenko and two underage girls. Ooh. Zazef was known to authorities for frequently arranging meetings with minors using a fake name and profile online. And while the exact circumstances of his most recent arrest were not Yo, disclosed, man, detectives so say the two girls he allegedly assaulted. How you go apply volume to go out to learn to talk and mate with women and use it on the children? God, mother! <laughs> I'm mad he only got one year, bro! Throw the book at this type of nigga. Were 13 and 17 years old. Despite this latest encounter with police, Zazef was once again released on a $135,000 bail and scheduled to appear in court in early October. While Zazef was a YouTuber who showed glaring signs of degenerate behavior, Plasma Master Don, a sweet old man singing song covers, would shock the internet with his horrible past. Plasma Master Don, a YouTuber in his early 70s, had gained popularity for creating videos where he sang covers of popular songs. Many viewers considered him their grandpa due to his wholesome and sweet online persona, as evident in in the comment sections of his videos. However, this image was shattered in 2020 when a YouTuber named Nick Crowley uploaded a video to his channel raising concerns that Plasma Master Don might be a recently registered sex offender. Nick Crowley first came across this theory in a post on the r 2 Morbid Reality subreddit. This post contained links to two now deleted sex offender registry sites, both displaying an individual named Donzel Edward Owens, a 73 year old man from Ohio. Donzel was arrested on August 19, 2019, for sexual imposition when he was 71 years old, just one month before his 72nd birthday. What the victim in this case was an underage boy, and the allegations involve unwanted <laughs> contact. The theory proposed in the subreddit suggested that Donzo Edwards Owens and Plasma Master Don might be the same person, primarily based on similarities in their appearances. And while Plasma Master Don claimed that he was not the same person in the offender registry site, further investigation revealed some crucial details. For example, the site listed Donzo Edward Owens' birth date as September 10, 1947, which matched the birthday list with Plasma Master Don in the About Us section of his YouTube channel. Notably, Donzel Edwards Owens drove a white 2005 Buick Century, coincidentally the same car seen in the possession of the owner of the Plasma Master Don channel as showcased in the video titled My Car 2005 Buick Century. Just four days after the r slash morbid reality post was published, Plasma Master Don announced that he would likely be stepping away from YouTube. He attributed this decision to his health issues, affecting his singing abilities, and he disclosed having COPD, a common lung disease causing restricted air flow and breathing problems. This video became Don's immediate follow-up after being exposed as a potential predator, fueling further speculation regarding his alleged sexual misconduct. Some individuals speculated that Don may have used his health concerns as an excuse to avoid addressing the allegations against him. Plasma Master Don's last Ami! video was uploaded on November 18, 2020, a mere eight days before Thanksgiving. To his viewers, this seemed like the ending to Plasma Master Don's story. He was another predator who, like many on this list, was able to evade actually atoning for his behavior. That is, until December of 2020, only a month after posting his last video, that an article was posted. In the article, you can see that Plasma Master Don passed away at Salem Hospital after a prolonged illness at 70.
23 years old. Fans of his channel were Bye, left with nigga. a sour taste in their mouths. Not only for this predator who had built Ain't no sour taste, nigga. There's a dude out here on some disgusting shit, man. Let that nigga die. Is anybody gonna cry at the funeral? He died the way he lived. Inside of something he shouldn't have been in. Oh, this time it was a hole in the ground. The other time it was other holes. Oh. Oh! a seemingly innocent platform, but the fact that his channel still stands in touch to this day, with YouTube making no move to remove the channel. This nasty motherfucker out of here, bro. <laughs> we don't need it. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to comment, like, and or subscribe. Twisms.